Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar today. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Liam Doyle, Product Specialist here at Staff Connect. This afternoon, our webinar will be focusing on, on how to improve the adoption rates of your employee app, where we will be interviewing Paddy O'Hagan, Internal Communications Specialist, who will be giving his insight and tips on the topic. So let me give you a bit of a background of our guest today. Paddy O'Hagan is an internal communication systems professional who began working with corporate communities as community manager and lead trainer for Europe at UBM, a 4,000 plus strong FTSE 250 company, undergoing a huge internal change from B2B publishing uh, house to B2B live events company. In this role, he was the liaison between the vendor and end users. He was also project manager for all strategic and implementation changes within the system. The main purpose of the role was to engage employees in the system, help them use it, and report on usage to the executive board. After this, Paddy went on to M uh, MTG, a 4,000 plus digital entertainment company. Paddy's main role here was delivering a digital communication tool to all employees across all locations, including Sweden, Norway, Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, Ghana, Tanzania, and the UK. The delivery coincided actually with a fresh brand refresh and delivery of new company values. The internet therefore was positioned as the day-to-day -day life of the new digital brand. The success of this delivery drew many invites to speak at communications events worldwide, including actually the EU Communication Summit in Brussels in 2015. Another offshoot of this success was the parent company of MTG, Shinovic, asked Paddy to introduce this way of digital communication to Millicom, a telco with 15,000 plus employees, primarily based throughout Africa and South America. Paddy's next challenge was to help Unibet, now a kindred group PLC, deliver a new way of communicating internally. Again, this was tied into a new brand across many, mostly European locations. And in this position, he successfully created a collaborative culture with 41% participation in the first six months and 90% active. Presenting his strategy and delivery of this to a judging panel at the UK Business Awards 2016, this resulted in the Best Place to Work Award for Unibet Kindred. Paddy, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. So, let me start with the first question. What is it? What do we mean by adoption? And as a follow-up to that, you know, why is it important? Um, so, your adoption rate is the percentage of people that have logged onto the app. Um, it's the first metric that a sysadm system administrator will be looking at whenever they're launching any system. Um, it's probably the first of a few milestones in the journey of an end user. So first you'll look at adoption, so they've signed in, that's adoption, but you know, logged in. Uh, the second would be the user finding value on the app. Um, and that's then becoming an engaged user, so engagement will be your second milestone. Um, then your third would be a user sharing um, information on the tool, that would be contribution or participation. And then the fourth would be, and this is sort of the, the mecca for employee internal comms, is advocacy, so the user then lets another person know about the information that they find useful on that app. Mm. Um, why is it important? Well, why measure anything? Um, in this specific instance of an internal comms app, you know, we're measuring success for all of our stakeholders. Um, so the question is always the same, has it worked? Um, have we communicated better than this with this tool than we did without it? Um, for the vendor, we need to prove that our tool provides a, strat uh, provides a valid return on the investment laid out. For the sysadmin, they need to show that their comm strategy has been a success. And for the budget holder, they need to show that they have solved the problem that they were attempting to solve. You know, coming to the market to look at employee apps or internal comms tools, you know, they're there to answer a question, whether it's, you know, a survey that they've scored badly on, they need to see a jump up on that as well. So, you know, it's 
it's all of these things really. Mm. And you mentioned these these um, these milestones. How do you suggest moving users from the I guess from adoption to being engaged? So there's there's loads of you know ways of getting people on the app and then getting them engaged. And one of the biggest is the what's in it for me campaign and everybody knows about that. So you know it's users finding value within the app, what's in it for them. But something that we do at Staff Connect around that also is, you know, what's in it for communicators, it's something that's often lost um, in in the planning. So, you know, it's all very well and good having really great documents, but why would communicators move over over to using this app? And you know, a lot of times you'll go in and natural communicators within an office, like an office manager who uses the send to all staff email and they rely on that and it works for them. They would see a tool like this as competition mm -hmm. rather than a tool for them as well. So it's working sort of as a middle person with all of these communicators and, and giving them a reason for why they should use the tool to communicate their news. Okay. And once you kind of and I created that kind of communication and you moved, you know, your employees from adoption to engaged, what's next? Where would you go from there? Um, so once our employees are engaged and then they're at fairly regularly and they're consuming information and they find value, I guess the next stage is donning our community manager hat for a minute, is, is get them to contribute. Um, so bringing the engagement rate as close as possible to our contribution rate is what we would call critical mass. So that's where as many people within a community are contributing, which in return makes the community stronger, makes it more diverse, makes it more valuable, and then that snowballs. So you get more people continually mm -hmm. coming in. And how can you actually tell that, you know, the solution and kind of the engagement is kind of working um, within the business. So I guess this is where numbers start to become more valuable rather than that just that rate of people who have logged into the app. That's, you know, a number, very quantitative, basic number. Whereas here we can be rather more qualitative. So we can start asking questions. We can put, you know, poll surveys on and things like that and ask people why they are using the app what they're getting from the app as well. Um, so you can see how it's working there. But also, again, going back to our communicators, we can now start to use the analytics for their benefit. So, for example, in factories and canteens, with canteens, um, we often see that Monday mornings are super popular mm. because the menus are go out on Monday morning and people yeah. log into the app and they, they want to see the menus. So then we can start tacking in important, more important news, company news, in on a Monday morning so people are naturally going to the app. And then we can see whether or not that other sort of more strategic stuff that we're tacking onto that, we can see that that is starting to be read more often as mm. well. But what would you say, let's say, you know, you're looking at the numbers, you're looking at those metrics, um, but what do you do if actually those metrics are kind of you know, showing you that the solution is you know, it's not working yet? Um, find out why, I guess, is probably the easiest thing to do. Um, it's definitely the most productive use of your time. Um, you, can, you can use analytics and look for themes. So if there's a particular location or department that aren't using the app, rather than start guessing from head office about what to do, if you can, go physically, go and ask people. If not, you know, contact them another way. Um, you know, it could be a, a number of things, really. Maybe your launch comms didn't get there. Um, maybe they don't have Wi-Fi. Maybe they just don't like it. Maybe their manager doesn't want them to. We've had a customer recently who did everything perfectly well. You know, great posters, great videos really great launch campaign, really good content plan afterwards. And we launched and they got a really bad number of come back of around 9%, 10% mm. people logging in. So they went out and they found that the blocker was at the managerial level. So um, sort of 
before it got to site? And the answer was pretty clear, you know, we don't want our staff on a site using their mobile phones yeah. so we didn't cascade this information because it's deemed as not safe to have your phone there. And it was like, right, so what do we do? So, you know, we rebranded the app with a real safety focus. So, you know, there was pure safety comms in one of the modules. Um, we linked it to their incident reporting log. So instead of being a hazard, it was a quicker way to report safety incidents on the site. Yeah. And then there was training modules added on and quizzes around safety added as well. So to overcome that problem, you have to go out and find out what the problem is. Yeah. And I think that's probably the best way to sort of overcome problems. And kind of as a follow-up to that, do you think that problem that arose, was there kind of any way of kind of finding that out before potentially? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, in, in all companies, mm -hmm. you know, they go through a business proposal and they go out and find all their key stakeholders. Yeah. And I guess this was an oversight mm -hmm. in, the, in that area. So once you've kind of addressed those problems, you kind of, you know, you can look back at those metrics and let's say, you know, you've addressed them, they're working, the solution's working well, the organization, but there are always going to be that, perhaps, um, hopefully the mi minority of employees, that small number, who just aren't engaging with the new solution. What can you do to kind of, you know, go with those guys? So you've gone out and asked them, why they haven't they've told you you've solved that and they still don't mm. let it go <laughs> then, you know, a, look, that's something else that's just them not being in a person or a team that are engaged within the wider community um for me as a vendor for you as an internal comms person i guess the overall strategy would be to re-engage them with you know a wider strategy but for a sysad i think you know there are Low, there is lower hanging fruit to be had. Yeah, there's only so many I guess yeah. you can get. But what blockers are there, would you say? Like, are there anything that regularly get in the way? Um, yeah, lots of things. Um, you know, uh, I guess probably the thing that we see the most is a mistrust of the, the whole purpose of downloading an app mm -hmm. um, from the company. Some people just don't want to do it. Um, they don't trust the company and, you know, we have a technical solution of that, obviously. So you go onto a web version, and you can you don't have to download the app. You can mm -hmm. just access all the same information within a web version. But I think you know it. It would be better to it. You know, look at the cause of that mistrust as yeah. well. Like that's a cultural thing, whether it's a team or an individual. That is a cultural thing, and you would then sort of I would advise the comms team to engage with HR and say, you know, why are these people not engaged? Mm -hmm. Why don't they trust the company? Are there things, and is there are there things that we can do to help regain that trust? Yeah. So, looking, I guess, slightly further ahead, what would you say success looks like after a year, for example? Um, it depends on the customer um, what success looks like. So again, going back to that question of why have they come to market? You know, is it because there was an all staff employee survey and they didn't don't feel that people knew the strategy enough? So again, you go back to that survey and find out if people know more about the strategy. Um, if it's you know we want to get people more educated on benefits that the company have because they're non desk. We can't email them out, you know, the bike cycle to work scheme yeah. or something like that. Have more people taking up that cycle to work scheme in those areas that you were targeting. So, you know, success is very different from company to company. So, it's, again, going back to that initial first meeting, what do you want to do with this app? Where is your calm strategy for the, those? And then using the app as the tool. Okay. Okay. And obviously, so success is different kind of with the individual um, kind of organizations. Um, would that follow suit with the targets that you look to set or kind of are, are the generic targets that you look to set for each company as well? Yeah, so targets are a, a funny one because things change within an organization within a year. So if you say, you know, we want to get 60% of people to 
downloads this app in six months, that's fine. But as soon as you start rolling out the app, and as soon as it becomes more successful, mm. somebody else, a senior person, will come in and say, you have an app. I have this stuff that I wanted to do. So that always changes. I would always try to go for more qualitative stuff, like those all-employee surveys, and look for a, a metric that's already there. So we have mm. a, a bottom line and try to beat that and what people expect sort of you know on an increase as well mm -hmm. and what can a what can a customer expect in kind of that in that first year in, in year one um hard work i guess <laughs> would be um would be the thing you know it's it's one one thing to launch an app it's another to make it successful for a whole year, there are natural peaks and troughs around the comms diary, you know, around mm. quarter reports and stuff. There's lots of stuff to talk about. Um, and then at Christmas, it dies, you know, everybody yeah. goes on holiday, so there's no news. And it's sort of building that up. And I guess sort of having somebody who's done it a few times before, when you come back in on January 5th or whatever, mm. and you say, oh my God, where is everybody? Why aren't they downloading the app? It's yeah. like, it's okay, you just have to you know, start again. So yeah. what, what's in our plan? Mm. Who has things to communicate and stuff like that? And kind of after that year one, what comes after that? Like where, where would you go from there? Well then, hopefully you would have a mature community, right? So you could start talking about user-generated content, um, sort of, diversifying the workload so it's mm. not all internal comms start looking at other people around the business who might take ownership of, of different modules and things like that so you know if you look at IT what is on the IT calendar for the next year are you releasing any new systems do you want a channel within the app and stuff like that so mm. it's again it's sort of making that a little bit more diverse and making it lower touch hopefully in the second year you're not working as hard. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, thank you, Paddy. That's been, you know, already kind of eye-opening in terms of kind of moving from kind of that adoption to towards that engagement, those engagement levels. Um, what we'll do now, everyone, is open it up to um, your own questions. So if there are any questions that you would like to ask Paddy um, in terms of kind of internal comms and um, levels of adoption, you know, feel free to use the questions kind of tab that you'll see on your control panel um, what we'll do is just kind of give a have a brief pause there I guess to let you type those and then um, we'll go ahead and ask pay your questions <coughs> so we have our first question that's um, just come through it's we use WhatsApp, even though we shouldn't, uh, to be honest, many organizations do. Um, how would I get them to use your employee app instead? Um, yeah, great, good question. Uh, so WhatsApp uh, is a tricky one, right? So in, in the world, if you need something, you'll go and find the tool to do it. So before, you know, internal comms, tools had chat, WhatsApp was there, and people went out to use WhatsApp. I guess try to emulate the structure of WhatsApp as closely as possible, and then give people the reasons for why they shouldn't use WhatsApp. So I guess, you know, if you're in a sales team, you don't have control over who has access to that group. It's one person rather than, you know, head office or HR and stuff like that. So, you know, find out what those groups are. So if it's departmental, create those chat groups within the app. And then if you're linked into an active directory system, as soon as that salesperson leaves, they're not a part of that chat anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's so many use cases for an internal chat system like we have a lot of nhs customers yeah. so we use that a lot with them because it's more secure um but yeah so you know if you don't have the tool people will go and find the tool so it's it's mm. all about providing the tool and then the migration from whatsapp to the internal tools is not only you shouldn't be doing it but also look at all this other stuff as yeah. well that you can access mm -hmm. through the app too. For 
let's say, small organizations who might use WhatsApp as kind of, you know, like they might have a company WhatsApp group, um, but they're looking to kind of migrate to a kind of a, a, an employee app itself. There might be concerns that, you know, moving it over, it might seem a bit corporate, slightly more rigid in structure, and it might potentially put employees off posting in kind of the, or kind of communicating in the new app. Are there any kind of ways you can get around that? Um, well, no, really, is the answer, but I don't think you would want to. I think that sort of structure around it is important. Um, you know, it's as corporate as your tone of voice within the app or, or as a company, right? If you're a finance company, you kind of want it more corporate. Mm -hmm. If you're a charity with lots of young people, you know, working fundraisers and things like that, then you kind of want it more fun and there's emojis and videos and, and, yeah. and you know and all of those things so again it's all about the culture and it's all about the tone of voice mm. um but that sort of structure around it i think you need to retain the professional okay. business tool aspect cool. of it uh, we have a question here what is the biggest mistake you see within businesses when trying to launch an app with a client um not planning for the whole year like mm. it, it is a strategic launch where you have to go the launch is important and we need to get all of these people on mm. but once they're on it's how do you keep them coming back for more and i think you know you can you can put a lot of effort um into that launch and then not spend enough time afterward mm -hmm. um, kind of a short-term planning not realizing there's a kind of a, the rest of the solution to use after launch. yeah exactly um i've just well my partner has recently had a baby and it's, it's a bit like you know focusing solely nine months on the labor mm. and then not on the actual baby coming home part right and that and that is exactly what it's like um, another question here, how do you shift employees away from the idea that the app is another form of social media, especially for those who don't particularly use or like the different kind of social media channels? Yeah, so I don't do social is, you know, what right up there we have a slide on it in our mm. launch workshop. Um, it's a business tool, it's a channel, you know, um, it's part of your corporate channel matrix. So there will be things that are specific to the app that you know are business related so you know post survey would be one of them mm. um and if somebody's saying and usually it's you know more senior managers are saying i don't, don't do social i don't have facebook this isn't a social media tool it's a business communication mm. channel and i think it's always super important to separate the two and as you say it is kind of that you know it is a business tool but how can you know how can we explain or how can you explain to employees that you know this isn't just a tool how can you kind of you know if it's just another tool might they go to it you know how can they explain you know can it be more than just a tool so that goes back to the content and, kind of, and every, everything that's within the app you know if it's just a chat forum where people are asking you know where shall we go to eat mm -hmm. then you know it's it's not really a business focused tool and again that comes into the strategies why do you need this tool is it so that your business can be more social, then fair enough. And then, yeah. you know, people saying, I don't want to be social, well, that's against the company mm. culture and stuff like that. But fundamentally, we're selling to businesses with a specific use case. So, you know, emboldening their brand DNA or uh, launching a new strategy and things yeah. like that. So it's really focused on those business goals rather than the more social aspect okay. of it. It's choosing using social media skills that we use in our day-to-day -day life yeah. to do business <laughs> to do business <laughs> to do business <laughs> um another question um how do we make content relevant for our users we are a organization of fifty thousand employees how do we make it relevant um so the, the, there's a few ways uh fifty thousand employees you say um we should give you sales is phone number <laughs> um but so yeah you, you can make it pretty personalized um to users so you know you can create different categories of of permission groups so if you wanted to go by location department hierarchy language things like that like you can you can break all of those down and uh, down and create you know a pretty complex matrix where as a sysadmin you've got a hundred news feeds 
Um, but me as an end user, I'll only see one or two. So I'll see global news and then, you know, my local location or, or, or my language or whatever it is that you, that you want to. So again, that's around strategy, how you want to uh, disseminate the information that, 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 you're, that you're pushing out. Mm. Cool. Well, um, I don't think, uh, I think that's the question that we have from you guys. Thank you um, for everyone who did um, ask a question. Um, and I think we'll probably wrap it up there. Um, if you would, you know, if you're, you know, if you currently, if you guys have an employee commerce project on at the moment um, and you would like to find out more, or just kind of a, kind of a, a general kind of inquire really around kind of employee comms, adoption, stuff like that, please uh, feel free to get in contact. Um, my contact details are all on screen um, now. Um, and you know, if there are any other questions that you'd like to ask Paddy, feel free to get in touch with me and um, I'll, you know, I'll rack his brain and see if I get an answer back to you. Um, but yeah, um, I think we'll wrap it up there. Paddy, thank you very, very much for joining and kind of I'm giving us your expertise on the topic. Thanks for having me. Um, and thank you all for joining us as well. I hope you found it um, as interesting as, as I did. So um, we'll wrap it up there. I uh, hope you all have a good rest of your days and hopefully we'll be in touch soon. Thanks, guys.